five seconds to go. Only a fraction of the cultivated area is at present irrigated. You, Mr. President, have remarked that we can double the acreage under irrigation so that cropping can be extended. The amount of land available is fixed, but the pressure on the available land is steadily increasing. There is no alternative, therefore, to increasing the efficiency of land utilization and getting higher productivity per acre. Irrigation is one means towards this end. It is important that we utilize fully and rapidly such irrigation potential as has been already created. I think this requires much closer association than is generally found between the irrigation engineer, the agronomist and the farm extension worker. Planning for the utilization of water must commence at the time an irrigation project is conceived. It cannot be left to be taken up when construction is advanced or after storage has been completed. I have been heartened to hear of the good work which has been done in the Kosi area. This might well be a model along with some others to be studied with advantage. India already has what is said to be the largest irrigation system in the world. But I am told that our water management system could be greatly improved. Irrigation can be wasteful and irrigation without drainage can cause damage. Water management and soil conservation constitutes sciences in themselves and I am happy that you are holding a symposium on the problem of water management. Our rivers and our ground water are national assets which we must use to the best overall advantage. I am deeply concerned that there has sometimes been a controversy over what are termed interstate river waters. I am sure that technical solutions can be found to safeguard the legitimate interests of every region or state and that these matters are best considered in a rational and scientific manner rather than on the basis of emotion. There is one other aspect perhaps not directly related to your conference on which I should like to touch. The development of irrigation, especially in arid tracts, is often a starting point of an economic and social revolution. It demands more tractic power and creates new demands for roads, markets and processing and storage facilities. The stimulus which irrigation provides to agriculture also generates new and additional incomes, much of which are invested in the facilities earlier described. A part of it also goes into village improvement schemes, the renovation and modernization of individual homes, the paving of streets, the digging of wells and so on. I believe this kind of development offers an unrivaled opportunity to promote a new village movement. Dear friends, it is an enriching experience to be sharing my perceptions on this vital issue with this August gathering. I am particularly pleased to join you at this Tata Memorial Lecture. Before I start my presentation, I wish to congratulate 
डॉक्टर भारत राम जी एंड हिज टीम एट पॉपुलेशन फाउंडेशन ऑफ इंडिया फॉर टेकिंग दिस इनिशिएटिव